Hello and welcome to Surge to Create, a Star Wars Legion podcast. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Jay, from Tabletop Oddity, and I'm joined today by uh, uh, the man himself, uh, Nick Freeman. Um, how are you today? I'm doing quite well. How about you? I'm very well. It's actually quite nice weather in the UK, which uh, makes a surprising change. <laughs> if anything, when I... This <laughs> it's is so large. We've actually got the lousy weather for Los Angeles. Oh, well, I mean, it makes a change, but um, surprisingly... Um, in the UK, you know, we're actually getting decent weather. I think probably global warming, but uh, there you have it. So, Nick, you're from, I mean, if, you, if you're on the Facebook group, I think you're going to know Nick, if I'm honest. Um, a very competent player, which we'll talk about later. Um, and we're going to talk about Impact X, which is uh, obviously your um, your blog where you talk about like tactics and all kinds of stuff, Star Wars Legion based. And uh, we're going to talk about the Star Wars Legion. Oh, I'm going to get the name of this incorrect, so we'll, uh, we'll get it on the screen. It's the Legion Tournament Circuit, which is a tool uh, designed to all, uh, help uh, tournaments and uh, the tournament scene and that kind of stuff. So we'll talk about the blog first. Um, when did you... You started that before the game came out, or did you start that? Um... No, so I, um, I had started following the game before it came out, um, and I was in between... Uh, competitive games at the time, mm-hmm. so I started. Uh, I started playing Legion for probably four months before I was confident it was a game I was going to stick with, uh, and then I started the blog. Ah, oh, sure, that, that makes sense. Um, I sort of, I whether I I. T- I was doing other games first, and then when Legion was announced, it was just sort of like all the the stars aligning, and I was just going to play that from the off. But um, it makes sense. So, what what was the thing that you know? You said you played it for a couple of months before deciding. What was that? Mm-hmm. T- what was that tipping point that got you in? That got you hooked forever? Um, you know, honestly, it was probably talking with uh, the designers at Gen Con, uh, meeting the community, and seeing kind of where the game was headed. Um, you know, the game wasn't a good spot when it came out, um, but, you know, every game, especially games with the constant releases, can, can change pretty quickly. Um, and just, you know, interacting with the community and seeing where the game was headed gave me the confidence that I was going to stick around in the system. Sure. I mean, it, we didn't want it to be, say, like Rune Wars, <laughs> a game that, right, exactly. you know, you need to know it's going to have this, the staying power. So. Um, you spoke about other games, and um, we'll talk about what you played beforehand, but you're obviously very good at the game. You're very analytical when it comes to uh, looking at the game and thinking about the game. Um, is that just something you're naturally, like, you naturally are like, or is that something you specifically, you know, you've wanted to step up your game for Legion? Is it like a new thing or an old thing? Uh, it's both. It's, so my play style is kind of um, uh, off the wall. I, I, I'm an I'm a artist, uh, professionally, so a lot of my uh, the things I'm trying to do are not um, kosher as far as uh, what everybody else is going for. Um, well, so I force myself to be analytical to kind of make sure what I'm doing makes sense. If that, yeah, sure. And I think well, you sort of mentioned it though. You said a lot of your lists are off the wall. Sometimes uh, when we're in the uh, on the Facebook chat and you're making some lists, I can never really tell if they are. You know, serious, a little bit trolly sometimes, or or what? Do you, I mean, you obviously you keep records and all this kind of stuff, but um, do you mm-hmm. do you play these wacky lists for fun, or are you playing them just to you know test the extremes of a of a potential meta? Both. Um, so I I do play all the lists that I post, um, and you know I I believe that you can get a good idea of something on paper, but you don't know really how it's going to work until you try it all together. Um, so you know, for that, like I did, I did. I've been playing a lot of Palpatine with six heal bots for a while. <laughs> um, and on paper, that looks like it's okay. Um, like it obviously, it looks like it has some strength somewhere and weaknesses other places. Um, but when you put it on the table, you know, it plays totally different than how you would think. As as well as I would think, or as bad as I would think, because that doesn't sound like a great list off the, <laughs> off the top of my head. Um, it it does pretty well actually. Okay, well that's the thing. I I think. I don't play enough games, I think, to really have an opinion on certain lists like that because they're so, I don't want to call them extreme, but they're so a little bit off the wall that most people won't try them. So the it, how, how can I give an expected result of how that would perform when I ha- I've literally never seen it on the table? Right, exactly. 
So yeah, um, let's talk about your blog. So you run the it, it's the blog it's Impact X, but the website's uh, legionimpact.com, I believe. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And you started that about four months after the game came out. Approximately, yeah. Yeah, and you. So, what would you say you post most of all? Mostly tactical stuff. Um, so it's got a, a little bit of everything. Um, it's mostly for the competitive community. Um, so it has um, the winning lists from uh, big events uh, such as uh, Nova Gen Con, uh, Adepticon, all of that. Um, and then it's got. Um, uh, unit breakdowns and analysis for each unit in the game. Um, and we go kind of all over the place in those analysis. Uh, it has big picture analysis, such as um, uh, what the unit's strengths and weaknesses are based on um, a uh, math breakdown. Um, but then also it has you know synergies and different interactions you can have on a very, like, micro scale and how to uh, best use the unit and, and sometimes some things that aren't uh, necessarily obvious. Yeah, just jumping in there when it comes to something that's not necessarily obvious. I think I was reading the one about the dice um, with the rebel snipers um, and I'd never ever really considered um, the the odds in that, if that makes sense. So it was something about if you roll a white and a red, white and a black dice, if you roll the hit on the black, if you need a hit or a crit basically with the white dice and sometimes it's better to roll them both with an aim than to just yeah, roll so the, the white and i was like oh, my mind was blown when i thought about that i was like damn even like even somebody who like follows the game enough even stuff like that was just catching me off off uh, off guard and obviously with regards to the website overall um i've i've used it to look up people's lists at events and stuff like that so it is a great resource you know for a lot of different people but definitely little things you might not think of i think well, the blog is all there for you, basically. Uh, yeah, something else we've been doing, which I, I'm, i you know, very happy with, is we started a um, uh, alternate play uh, system called Gathering Legions. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, it. Uh, basically what I did is I went through and I reverse engineered the entire game uh, and made a system where you can create your own units um, and then implemented pretty balanced rules uh, for people who want to make their own characters and play their own campaign uh, in a narrative fashion. Sure, and I think um, uh, it's not personally, I've never really been into like campaigns and narratives, but uh, I mentioned I had Warcargy on just uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about how essentially it sort of a little, sometimes can feel like the campaign and narrative stuff is very popular, but sometimes a little under underworked on. But obviously you guys, are uh, not only do you do the high-end competitive stuff you're obviously doing like the narrative stuff like that um, i mean that i mean I, yeah. yeah go on i feel the same way i'm mostly a competitive player um but i'm really interested in like the the design aspect so even though i'm not playing the campaign as much building it um and then figuring out you know exactly how the mechanics of the game work on such a small scale um was very interesting as well Sure, and I like when the game first came out. I just getting my head around the way that the dice were essentially like, you know, three plus saves, uh, four plus saves, six plus saves, and all that kind of stuff. Was for me that was the, I was enjoying that level, but I imagine you've taken it to a whole different kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, specific. Yeah. So in this system, we figured out what the point value is for a uh, white die attack or a white die with a surge attack, um, and and how how to value each ability, uh, sure. which I think is pretty interesting. On a simple level, how would you go about something like that? So like, you know, Stormtroopers have got white offensive dice, but they've got red defensive dice. On a simple level, how do you split out the maths of knowing how much of each one costs though? Like, do you then compare another unit that's got black red defensive dice with other abilities to try and find like an average or what? Like, what is it there? Yeah, so you take the most simple units in the game you can, and then you cross-reference everything to um, deduce out what's common, and then figure out um, how, what the point difference is compared to what the ability difference is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you go back and you rebuild characters using the system, they come within a couple points of, of accurate. Um, hmm. 
Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's not something I personally have like, ever really thought about in depth. I, I'm not one. I'm not smart enough, <laughs> which is a big problem. <laughs> and two, like, I doubt that. Uh, two, it's like it's a lot of effort to think about it, and my mind sometimes can be a little bit elsewhere. But um, yeah, uh, uh, it's very interesting that you can do that, and I guess that really helps with then analyzing, you know, what lists are good because you sort of have a like a point, um, like an efficiency kind of concept in mind. Um, and also then when you're playing the game, you know which units are essentially the best units to take down first and that kind of stuff. Right, exactly. And do you, how would you then incorporate that into the blog? Would, would do, you wouldn't necessarily say like, oh, this is a really good effective unit, take this one down first. You'd, just, you'd break down that specific unit, would you? Yeah, we do actually. If you go into um, uh, the card section, um, we have a breakdown of each unit and their points efficiency. I'm going in this. Yeah, if you want to pick out, if you want to pick out a uh, a unit, we'll look at it really quick. Oh, I'm not. Uh, let's do the ATR two. Yeah, I was going to say you get it up on your screen because uh, I'm not going to be able to uh, do it just as a sale. But you go on, you can talk about it. Sure. So if we look at the ATRT, for example, um, we have uh, a. Um, oh, I'm forgetting the statistical name for the. Process, but essentially a um, points over replacement efficiency value um, mm -hmm. compared to core units. Sure. Um, so it'll so if you see like a, an unupgraded ATRT, we have it at twenty seven percent efficient versus a core unit, um, meaning that uh, for more. the same. What's that? Sorry, when you say twenty seven percent, is that twenty percent better or twenty percent twenty seven percent worse? Twenty percent, twenty seven percent. Total. So, so if we're saying that a uh, basic core unit is 100% efficient, ah, right. then the ATRT is at 27%. Ooh. Um, and their melee output, for example, is 128% efficient. Hmm. And um, so if we go, if you go through all the units, we have a breakdown like that for every unit. Oh, I mean, I didn't know about this, and I've been on the website, so I'm I'm going there tonight, <laughs> studying up. <laughs> I'll be there. Maybe next to Decathlon, yeah, so I'll be there. Top two, I doubt it, but you never know. <laughs> um, uh, we'll... Yeah, so something we've we've been redoing um, graphically. Um, so I know numbers aren't great for everybody. I'm a visual person myself. Oh, I've seen um, so I broke up... Yeah, the little spot. I want to call them a spider diagram. I don't actually know what they are. They're like a circle that has like points. At but, yeah, so spider like... diagram is one of the words. Most people call them radial, but spider is not incorrect. Oh, well, I just didn't know that, and I just guessed that. So I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the radials, go on, tell me about them, because uh, just explain them what they are and what they do. So it's just a, a graphical representation of those numbers I was talking about. Um, so the way it works is we've got um, a gray circle in the middle, which is 100% efficiency, um, and what you would get out of a core unit. Um, and when I say core unit, I mean a, a, a basic unit, either a, a rebel trooper or a stormtrooper um, equivalent. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got an overlay of the stats of the unit we're looking at, um, just to give you an idea of what their strengths and weaknesses are compared to a core unit. Sure. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I've seen them and I enjoyed that, but I didn't necessarily understand. I, I was, I'm, you know, I'm just passing by basically and seeing it on Facebook. But now that I uh, understand what it's representing and the, all the, you know, the calculations and stuff that's gone behind that, I'm going to, one, I'm going to look at the cards and two, I'm going to start looking at these diagrams. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. So I guess that's a really good resource for that. Um, and as I said, you you also do stuff like uh, corner, I want to say corners peaking, but like slingshotting and that kind of stuff, which um, for somebody uh, who who's maybe getting into the game competitively, they might be things that they've not thought about before. Um, but I guess you've just, these kind of concepts and ideas are just stuff that you've picked up yourself playing the game a chunk. Right, or from other games. A lot of it is... Um, uh, tactics you can apply to any game, and then how they fit within a, the rules of Legion. Um, so that's a section we call Corner Case. Um, and we do uh, kind of um, deep dives into specific tactics or interactions that might not be obvious or explain them in a way that um, might help you use them better. For sure. And I think like I've, I'm I was going to say guilty of it, but I guess guilty is not the right word, but I'm a user of it myself. I like going on there and just sometimes it'll be an idea that maybe I've thought about, 
but I've never really thought about all of the cases where I should use it and what and that kind of stuff. So it's definitely worthwhile uh, for anybody checking out if they've not already been on that. It's uh, legionimpact.com or, you, you know, just search Impact X and I think it'll come up um, in Google. Everybody knows how to use Google. It's, you know, I think even my mum can do it these days, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is a surprise because she can barely see. But anyway, we're moving on. Let's talk briefly okay. then about Adepticon because obviously you did quite well at Adepticon. You went 5-0 and oh, um, and that put you at the top with uh, Kingsley, I believe, first and second only based on strength of schedule. Is that correct? 4-0 uh, and oh for oh. Hike Man and 8-0 uh, and oh for the weekend. Well, well, there you have it. I thought, I, you know, I was watching a bit of it on the 5th Trooper stream, which was fantastic. But <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, but, uh, obviously, you know, congratulations, I guess, is one. But you're obviously a very competent player of that. So how long have you been playing war games in total? Or... Do, is it? Are you, are you? This is a weird question. Are you only good at Legion? <laughs> is a weird way to phrase it. But um, were you good at previous games? Is it just? Yeah, I was good at previous games before. Um, I've been playing war games almost twenty years. Um, Eighteen plus years for sure. Well, if you're on the video, you wouldn't believe he could even be that old. I mean, he, <laughs> he looks like he's about eighteen. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So you've been yeah. you've been playing games for that long. And, do you think, basically, if you would have just started when Legion started, do you think you would be as good as you are now? Or do you think the years and the experience from, you know, previous games have helped? You said some no, of the tactics were applicable. Yeah. Um, if I had just started with Legion, I wouldn't be nearly as good. Um, a lot of it comes from um, experience in other games. And then there's a lot of um, convention... Uh, I don't have the right word for it. Um, just, uh, just news. Endurance or stamina. Yeah. yeah. Um, like a, that, yeah uh, that makes sense. And I'm sort of happy to hear you say that because oh, I played Warhammer Fantasy maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago. And I played it for maybe like two years. And then I just stopped. And that was really my only experience. And then essentially two or three months before Legion came out was when I started Wargaming again. And... Uh, I'm not good. <laughs> like, I'm okay. Right? Like, you know, I can win some games against some decent people occasionally, but I'm not particularly great. So a bit of me has wondered how much of that is, uh, you know, personally, how much time should I dedicate it to get really good now? What's my, where should I set my expectations based on the amount of time I put into the, my amount of experience? And weirdly, I'm happy to hear you say that experience plays a chunk of it because experience, you know, you can't, essentially you can't rush you need you need time and you need that to grow so uh, that's uh, good for me but um so um what other games were you playing right uh, so my my main game before uh but so i started with uh 40k mm -hmm. um back in second edition as a young um, whippersnapper i imagine yeah i was <laughs> i was 14 or 16 at the time <laughs> um and then from there i moved to uh war machine which is the game i played Mostly, I played that um, pretty much all the way up until Legion, sure. um, and I comp competed on that internationally as well. Um, and then from there into Legion, um, I dabbled in some X-Wing and some other games, um, but they just didn't hold my attention. Sure, it's interesting you picked those games because when I started the YouTube channel before Legion came out, literally I I bought the core set for forty k. I played X-Wing, and I also bought the like one-person faction sets for War Machine. So they were actually going to be the games that I was going to pick. But then Legion sort of just managed to fill every single every single gap you could want in like one game. It was competitive, solid, new, interesting IP, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it really fit for me. And I guess like you, you know, you played it for a couple of months, and then have you ditched your other games now, or do you still dabble? Uh, I still dabble in other FFG games, um, but Legion's pretty much it for me now. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. Um, Adepticon, you obviously mm -hmm. did very well. Um, it, had had you done many big tournaments before? Was there anything you like wish was done better there, or was the tables were, looked great? But how was your experience just overall? Uh, so this was my first time going to Adepticon, um, and it was it was a positive experience. It was. Um, well run. Um, it was mostly organized by uh, Brendan France and LJ, um, who had also did LVO. Sure. Um, so uh, on their end, it was run pretty well. Um, and on FFGs, it was well supported. Um, the logistics of the actual convention weren't great. Um, it was in a hotel in, in uh, near Chicago. 
um, with nothing really around it. Um, and the uh, venue itself closed pretty early every day. Um, so the convention itself wasn't amazing, um, but the tournament, as far as Legion went, was great. Sure. And that's interesting to hear about the tournament, the event itself, because I've sort of been tempted to go to one of them. Obviously, living in the UK, it's a big, big expense, big trip kind of thing. So um, obviously, I'm torn between Adepticon and Gen Con, uh, there being, them being the two. So um, interesting to see hear your experience about that. Something that I was, we were meant to talk about. I had it on the notes and I completely forgot about it. We should have done this straight after Impact Tax, but we'll do it now. And that's the, and you mentioned LJ. I think LJ is responsible, part responsible for this, unless I'm going crazy. It's Legion Tournament Circuit, which is a new website, new resource dedicated to, um, well, I'll let you explain what it is because uh, I'm a bit of a noob, but I don't really know. <laughs> sure. So the, uh, the Tournament Circuit, or LTC as it's being um, referred to, is, is LJ's, uh, LJ's project. Um, and uh, other people are, are chipping in and helping out with it. Um, but essentially, it's um, the uh, a resource for tournament players that kind of streamlines and um, uh, homogenizes a lot of the um, tournaments. So people are running a new tournament, or uh, basically just ensures consistency across everything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, it goes over how much terrain is appropriate, how to um, identify what terrain as what, um, you know, how to handle your timing and, uh, and um, pairings for the event, um, that sort of stuff. There was something so that, it's more of a... Yeah, sorry. Yeah. There was something I really enjoyed, I think, that they did. I, I, I think they did at Adepticon, which I wasn't really sure, which was, I think it was essentially notes at the side of the table of what the terrain did. And like how you should play yeah. it, essentially, which I think is actually a really good idea because you spend five, ten minutes talking about it and then you inevitably forget an important piece of terrain and then halfway through the game you've got to like wing it and you're like, yeah, we should have just decided this earlier, but we forgot. Yeah, so that's something we're pushing for in the competitive scene is not um, taking a lot of the uh, negotiation out of the player's hands and just and just having a, a judge arbitrate um, this is what the terrain is, this is how it's set up. You know, it, it simplifies the game and it causes a lot less confusion. Um, I know a lot of people who are playing casually uh, don't love that idea, um, but it's something that's kind of essential to a competitive, um, balanced playing field. Sure, and I think casually there's no need for it. You, like, it doesn't matter. I can play games with my friend and they're not really bothered if I accidentally move somebody five inches across the board. It, like, it doesn't matter if it's a casual game. But in a tournament game... You as I said it's easy to neglect mentioning a certain piece of terrain, and if that becomes super important, and then you've got to get a judge in to decide what you should do, and you're slowing down the game and causing like friction where well, it doesn't need to have the friction if you have uh, a set of rules just for you know laid at the side. So oh well, this grassy field here gives me light cover; it's difficult terrain. There's the conflict and the dispute's gone, and in theory you can speed the game along. So I think that's a really good idea. Is the well, I'm going to burp. I do apologize. Is there plans maybe for having uh, list submissions on this website? Uh, so, you know, we can keep track of like best lists and, and that kind of stuff, like the meta, essentially? Um, I heard there was. I don't know for sure. Oh, I'm um, not going to. I'm not going to make you commit to something if you don't know. <laughs> no, I don't do worry. know. So, Impact X on my personal blog, we track the winners. Um, uh, I know, like, in the X Wing community, they track. Uh, the top however many from each event. Um, uh, so personally, I'm just tracking uh, the podium uh, first place or top three from, from really big events. Mm -hmm. um, and I heard that the LTC site was going to track uh, lists, but I don't know to what extent. Is the LTC name deliberately evocative of ETC? Or WTC. Yeah, there's a bunch of different Oh, I haven't um, heard of them. <laughs> I already know uh, the WTC is the big one. It's the world, uh, the world uh, tournament circuit. Right. Okay. Um, and then ETC and ETC are derivatives of that. All right. Fair enough. I only know ETC because of like when I'd played fantasy, they had like Europeans and all that kind of stuff that was sort of home homemade done. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's it's. I think it's a it's a great idea. Essentially, uh, Legion's in a very weird place where it's it. Like 40k gradually and naturally grew 
over time and like over 20 years, 30 years, whatever many years it is, whereas Legion is getting heavily supported and it's sort of thrown into it now. It's like a new game. It was released whenever a year and a bit ago. And it's 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 a fully fledged game. There's no waiting around. You can go in now and play different styles of play and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the community is already quite large, but we don't have a lot of the tools that a lot of the older games had, I think. And this like LTC is a, a great like indication of that. And obviously there's blogs like yours and podcasts and all that kind of stuff all all like working together to push all this kind of stuff up. So I think it's a really good initiative and I'm I'm very excited to see where it goes. Like I think there's a lot that could be done with it. Oh I agree. Yeah. I think the community definitely needs um champions to kind of help forward where we want the game to go. Sure, yeah, and it's 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 weird. I think that essentially the people who are now have a voice need it's it's more dependent on us in a sense because it's so fresh that we don't have even if people drop out and stuff like that, it could actually really impact the games following viewpoints of the games and stuff like that. So I think that's really important. And um, let's let's change in gear a little bit, moving up to a notch. You said you played some other games in the past. Which begs mm-hmm. the question for a lot of people: Are you a Star Wars fan? Oh yeah, I'm a, a lifelong Star Wars fan. I don't know how if you can get on camera, but I've got Han's blaster on my arm tattooed. Sure. Um, um, I've got to confess that I am not a Star Wars fan, so the, there was no <laughs> there was no wrong answer there. If you would have said no, I would have been like, all right. <laughs> That's it. But yeah, um, I'm not. I'm not as uh, deep into the EU as some people. Um, like I've read a lot of the. Uh, um, novels when I was in high school and I've kept up with you know all the movies um, but you know I haven't gone through all the comics or all the games and stuff like that yeah to be fair there is really quite a lot of stuff out there if you if you wanted to it's like I like Star Trek uh, I always mention this because it's worth mentioning at every single point of my existence but I don't love it as much as some people I've even I've been to conventions and stuff like that but I'm not going to spend I'm not going to read every single book every comic series and all that kind of stuff there's just so much out there um, but I do feel like um, I'm trying to watch Clone Wars now. <laughs> I'm up to like season three or something, and uh, mm-hmm. I, I, even that though, it's that actually is quite good. I think I enjoy that probably more than the films, but we won't get into that too much. Um, oh. But yeah, so it's I, because we play. I play Star Wars Legion. People sort of expect you to like Star Wars, and I think you don't necessarily have to. But it's obviously quite handy. You don't have to. Um, so when this game came out, something else that I. I'd told my friends from other game systems was that um, uh, Legion is, is so well written that I would probably still play it even if it wasn't a Star Wars game. Um, and that's uh, a lot of um, people coming from uh, from other game systems assume that people are playing Legion because it's Star Wars, not because it's a good game. Um, and that's that's kind of a narrative we have to change. Sure, and I think, I mean, I'm a big part of that narrative, I think, for, in one sense, that I'm not a Star Wars fan. I said I admitted it, like, I'm here because the rules are solid. If the game wasn't solid, I'd be on a different game. I I really dislike, say, the 40k universe. That's a bit of a bold statement, but what I mean is the 40k rules don't get me the same way that Legion does. If I like 40k as much as I like Star Wars, I, I like Star Wars a bit better. But if I did, I would still be, I'd be picking Star Wars because Star Wars to me is the better game. Um, and yeah, I feel like sometimes in one sense the IP is obviously a good thing for drag, getting people to play the game. If you picked Room Wars, for example, you might not get the same support or quality or what have you. But as you said, it's a great rule set on its own. And um, I guess it's an interesting point that I never really considered that people might ignore the game just because of the the IP because they think people are playing it just because of the IP. That's the main pushback I heard in the beginning, yeah. I, it's not, yeah, it's not something I'd ever considered, but I'm, I, I'm in an ecosystem bubble, you know what I mean? I'm only really talking to people who play Star Wars Legion, so it's not. Sure. I'm not necessarily going to be able to like, answer that. So um, we, t- we spoke about then if you're a fan of Star Wars. What do you think about, you know, let's, I'm going to ask everybody this, because it's quite controversial. I, I like I like poking the fire. Um, the new films. Let's talk about the new trilogy. What's your? Are you, are you are you enjoying them, or are you a bit apprehensive about them? Um, I enjoy them. Um, some more than others for sure. Um, but I think they all have a, a valid place. Um, and it, you know they're not. None of them have been bad films, whether they were contra- tr- controversial or not. Um, but I think uh, the content we're getting out of them 
in the games is really interesting, um, especially in X-Wing. And I hope to see it in Legion as well. Um, and I, I have a feeling that um, some of the other films, like Solo, for example, um, I didn't love my first viewing of it. Um, but on my second and my third, I actually thought it was rather well done. Yeah. Um, just because they're not in our initial uh, headcanon or expectation of what the film is going to be um, doesn't mean they're bad films. Sure. And I think I, I'm not trying to claim to have the most unique perspective ever, but not being, I, I'm not obsessed with the original films. I'm not even that bothered about the Clone Wars era. I like, I'm not, I'm no attachment to it necessarily. And I go into it and I think they're all right films. They're all right. They're no better or worse to me than say the Marvel films. I, I just, I just enjoy them for what they are. Um, and like the solo film was fine. I think obviously, you know, you once you have like a, an attachment to something, your expectation can also increase and people like, you know, the, I think like the new, whatever it was, The Force Awakens, no, the other one, The Last Jedi did have some problems after the fact. Like if you think about it logically and yeah, there's some loopholes and things that they probably could have done better. But overall, there are right films. I just sort of wish everybody loved it because, you know, if you, if you want to have Star Wars Legion, be you know better received having star wars be like as big as marvel is now would be you know would be better if that makes sense sure um and i mean i think we can separate the game from the the films as well sure i'm not uh, saying that one is dependent on the other but one would definitely help the other i think right that's that's all i guess um so <laughs> What right? Okay, I'm changing. I'm going back to Legion a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm all over the place when I do these podcasts. I'm just all over the place. I don't even care. Um, what is your like, as of what's out now? Or I'd, I'd accept Sabine or Bosk. What would you say is your favorite unit or character or commander, whatever it is? Um, that's a interesting. I'd, I'd probably have to go with Honor the Emperor, um, mostly because they are control pieces um, and they let you. Um, kind of get into your opponent's head and, and play with them that way. Um, and that's a play style I really enjoy. Hmm. Yeah. By the way, I really appreciated you saying third wheel for one of the... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, I coined like, that. That's my phrase. I was like, I was like yes. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. That's what we're calling. <laughs> it's, better, it's a better name. It's a better name. We're, we're all happy about that. Um, yeah, it's interesting you say Palpatine because I like Palpatine, but I wouldn't necessarily call him my, my favourite. He's uh I see what you mean about control. Obviously when he you know, you can pop now you'll die and really like start messing people over and stuff like that. Um Han's an interesting control piece, I guess. Uh, I've never I've never really played with him, but you you call him your favourite, like um and you you ran them at Adepticon, didn't you? So you had that that, that mm -hmm. the trio there. So um yeah, it's interesting to call your favorite. What's your worst favourite unit that and I don't just mean the Earth Speeder. <laughs> no. Um I'm, I'm probably going to call that for this, but it's got to be Luke. You know, I just don't... Um, Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Luke is probably... Um, no, you're not saying he's not good. He's obviously fantastic. So, but it's, He's too good. It's just... Um, he's not interesting. Um, yeah. And I don't think he's necessarily healthy for the game. Um, but I think, yeah, if I was my, my least favorite, that's got to be Luke. Sure. And I remember when the game first came out, I was, I was, I was telling people, I'm like, Vader's too expensive and looks better than vader and people are like nah mm -hmm. nah i'm like no he, he, like like look at what he can do he just can do so much more um and i think that sort of is the case i reckon you could you could literally switch the point cost for them too and i don't think you'd be too far off like there's that he just is that good luke i think and he's um it can be a little mm -hmm. bit oppressive i think but the one good thing about that is he comes in the core set so like pretty much everybody has him <laughs> it's the only it's the only saving grace but uh yeah i can definitely imagine that um if there was a unit that you could see in the future that you'd want to get in that you you know that's maybe not been announced or something, you know what would you what would you love to see? Are you a Mandalorians kind of guy? Or, do you know? Uh, so I had made using my uh, the Gathering Legions math, I had made like an old Ben operative, um, and that's something I've been pushing for. I think that would be a really interesting character um, to play in the game. Um, again, I, I feel like it fits kind of my style of like the the mind games and the um, not necessarily combat oriented uh, unit, um, and 
uh, I think that would be interesting. I'm also really excited about the droids in general, um, just as a faction. Yeah, so, well, I mean, yeah, let's speak about them a little bit. Obviously, they've got the uh, AI keyword, which I can never probably remember what it is, but it's basically, if you don't give them an order, they're going to shoot first. And that, I mean, that's a that's a game style in, its, in itself, essentially. It's a disadvantage if you don't give them an order, and it's a big boon, essentially, if you can coordinate with them. So why are, we, why are you so excited about them, just for that reason, or is it something else? Um, so a lot of the... the forces I played in War Machine were kind of swarm swarm armies. Um, so that's a play style I enjoy. I, um, I also think that uh, they're just going to open up the play styles. Clones might as well. Um, they could also play similar to Imperials. I don't, I don't know yet. Um, but I feel like droids are going to just change the way... They're going to add another way to play the game. Sure. I think from myself, uh, it seemed when I saw them, obviously, and they spoke about it at uh, the panels and stuff, you've got elites and you've got you know hard you know classic mm -hmm. orcs and goblins kind of throwaway essentially units that you can use um and the one thing i would say is that yes um you've got your hard i mean that seems to be unique to the droids i wouldn't necessarily say that the elite unit for the uh, republic is actually that unique in a sense because with the new shore troopers and stuff like that it seems like elite troopers are not too dissimilar from the empire unless you have a different opinion on that uh, you know the no that's what i was kind of saying is oh. that the republic and the empire may end up being fairly similar we don't we don't know yet um but uh, you know at the first glance it, it definitely appears that clones are just slightly better um imperial forces Sure, and have you have you uh, have you done the maths here? Who who are you out, out of what we've seen? Who do you think will be the stronger? It's a very weird question because we're very many months away from it. But who do you reckon will be the stronger faction out of the two? You know, my hope is that they'd be exactly the same. Of, um, of course, on top of the uh, the existing factions. Um, I did kind of a, a room temperature poll on the Facebook to see which people preferred, um, and it seems to be pretty even as well um so you know i, I really don't know oh if you make go on flip a coin tell me go on <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, my, my personal preference would be droids sure. um, that's what i'm gonna focus on i th i probably paint the droids because uh, the way i plan on painting them is simply spray them with like a i don't know an off a bony color kind of thing and give them a sarah sepia wash and color i'm just gonna leave it as that and be like ah, i'm done look at these high quality <laughs> i'm terrible at painting i hate painting <laughs> yeah. So the less we check the paint, the better. Are you a, so you're not a painting fan yourself? Uh, okay. I, I enjoy painting. My problem is that since I do art as a as a living, um, the time I spend painting could be doing real work. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that is a problem. <laughs> so, um, so it's, it's a direct competition for time. Sure. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's one thing that X Wing is good at because you don't have to paint the ships and stuff like that. But <clears> a lot of people really enjoy the hobby side of things. But Conversely, it can take a lot of time, and if yours, you're essentially not doing the same thing, but similar kind of artistic, creative kind of things. It's like you don't really, you maybe just want to concentrate on the analytical side of the game. So that's, that's an interesting viewpoint, not one that I have to worry about. I'm just lazy and not very good at painting, <laughs> <laughs> so sort of a, a little bit different. Um, you spoke, we spoke about the your campaign thing a little bit. Um, what is so what form is that? If I go on the website today, I go on the um, what do I see? Like, do I see PDF downloads or like what kind of thing is it when you get there? Uh, it's mostly a text based page. Um, uh, so it, it's uh, on the website, it's all um, a text walkthrough of how the game works. Um, and then we've also got um, some PDF. Uh, uh, character sheets for building your own character. Mm -hmm. And then um, we also have a, I want to say it's a JavaScript uh, web-based character builder um, that was created for us uh, on the Discord. Hmm. That sounds interesting. So, well, I mean, I'm going to have to check that out. I've never, it's not something I personally would generally be interested in, but that sounds so interesting that I'm going to have to go, I'm going to have to go and check <laughs> it out. Um, so I, obviously you you've created your own, stuff in the future and that kind of stuff right, of what you maybe would like to see but if you could pick one thing you would have released right now that you really want over anything that's not been announced right, what would you pick there? Uh, 
Um, tough questions. You come on, you come on this chat, you get tough, hard <laughs> yeah. questions. <laughs> Some hard stuff. Um, I mean, I said old Ben. I'd love to see him. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Rito is another fan favorite of mine. Um, I'd like to see you know more of the the bounty hunters for sure. Yeah, obviously Bosk and Sabine. Obviously, Sabine's not bounty hunter, but <laughs> um, they're obviously coming out next month. Do you think? Mm-hmm. And I'm again, I'm jumping all over the place. Do forgive me. I said I thought the vehicles weren't going to change the matter too much, but I think the double DTs probably will. Um, uh, what do you concur with that? And if you do or you don't, what's your thoughts on Bosk? It seems like Bosk and Sabine are probably going to be some f- featuring. So I'm. I think the vehicles may change the meta. I don't know for sure yet. I haven't played them a ton. Um, um, I think. Uh, I think everybody knows that Sabine is going to be really good. Um, I think Bosk is probably better than people think, though. Um, uh, you know, when he was announced, people uh, kind of responded to him negatively. I'm not going to um, lie. Thought he was terrible when I first saw him. <laughs> I was like, nah, yeah, I I'm, like, I'm just going to play Bubba. But you I know, think, um, thinking about it, it's, he seems all right. I, I think he's another Chewbacca scenario where people are really down on him. They think he's too expensive. Um, they don't appreciate uh, kind of how he plays on the table. Um, so he's on, on paper, you know, he might look a little underpowered. Um, but when you uh, put him on the table and see how he actually interacts, um, how durable he is, how much damage he puts out. Um, I think he's actually ended up being uh, really strong. And, and uh, how intuitive a unit is to use is also important. And I think Bosk is actually easier to use than Boba. Um, so we might see him more once people once he's been released and people figure out how he works. Sure. And do you think the new car troopers are there? Are there well, the Tontons might, but do you think the car troopers and the, the Tontons are going to mix things up as well? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, that's good because I was just gonna say, like, what they—it seems to be that almost everything that they're adding recently are potentially going to feature. Whereas, like, stuff like Royal Guard and the Wookies, it's not that they're never going to feature, but the they seem a little less likely to be here to be in the big top tier list. If you know what I mean, I don't know if you believe if you agree with me though. Well, that's, that's interesting. I see um, local. I see Royal Guards everywhere. Um, so I'm not sure what the meta's like uh, over with you. But yeah, over here we see Wookiees and Guards. Uh, not in every list, but in, in quite a few. Fair enough. It's just, I, I think, to be fair, we, we uh, in, the, in Europe, uh, we don't have like the big tournaments and we um, the local stores can be a little bit, you know, just local people, people are playing whatever they want kind of thing. It doesn't really... Mm-hmm. Uh, and But... Um, do you, I'm presuming you don't play in the Invader League or anything like that. I'm guessing you're considering how many games you play. You must be a physical, physical world kind of guy. Yeah, I don't. Um, again, I don't really play on TTS just because if I'm on the computer, it's you know time I could be working. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, you know, I also kind of feel that they're they're different games. Um, although they're pretty, they're similar. I think TTS and and actually playing Legion on the table are are different enough to be different skills. Uh, I mean, I haven't really ever thought about that. I, well, I've thought about it a little bit because um, I was in the team week with Ellis and Nikki, and obviously they're, they're much better players than I am. And um, they they help, the guys said they helped me a lot just with the way that we were approaching in the game. And um, when I would like do my test games with them, they would think about things that I never would. Um, and I, for a while, I would say that helped me on the table. Um, so I think it, like there's some crossover skills I think, but I'm with you in the sense that you know it you can't even the, measuring everything in tabletop simulator it's dead easy to check range four and like you know without even thinking about it while your opponent's doing your turn. Whereas in mm-hmm. in real life, I can, sometimes I can't be bothered just getting the stick out and putting it everywhere, a single place on the table, like always oh, the distance between this building and this building, this and all that kind of stuff. So I'm with you in that they are different beasts. Um, I think there is some crossover, but... Um... but yeah, there's, no, there's definitely mechanical crossover. I was thinking more um, psychologically. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, in TTS, you know, it's easy to measure. On the tabletop, I can see what my opponent's measuring, so I know what they're thinking and planning. Um, there's, there's a lot of... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of, of in-person uh, tells that you can get 
in a, in a physical game. Sure. I think um, there was one game, I, the last game I played in an event, I think I lost that game because I did something that I didn't need to do that then told my opponent what I was going to do. And I was like, why did I do that? Actually, I didn't I, I didn't even need to check that at this point. I could have just waited. Um, and it's interesting you say, like, tells and stuff like that. Is that... How big of a factor do you psychologically look at your opponent? Like, is that something you're very aware of? Or are you just sort of, like, checking for stuff like, oh, what do you think their next move is going to be? Oh, uh, no, that's something, at least me personally, that I'm very aware of. Um, you know, um, you can tell when somebody starts to get defensive or, or nervous about what you're doing, um, and it helps, you know, plan your next moves. Um, psychology is, is a big part of board games for me. Um and so that's that's part of the reason that I don't play TTS is that a lot of those elements that um, I enjoy I enjoy uh, you know working with uh, don't exist. Sure, and I agree with that. I think that's actually very true. There's certain I'm very conscious that when my opponent picks a unit that I don't necessarily want them to do a specific thing with because otherwise it's going to mess my plan <laughs> up or whatever. You that I'm very conscious not to look like I'm like. Ooh, I'm. I want to. I need to relax because it's, it's unlikely they're going to do what I'm going to do. But I don't want them to pick up on that kind of stuff. And at the same time, when they measure stuff and when they're looking at my units, you it is. It's a very. It, it can be a psychological thing. Like command cards. Sometimes you can just talk your way into making somebody pick a command card. You know, if you really mm-hmm. wanted to, it's actually a very interesting game like that. Where um, I can definitely, it's a little bit like poker, isn't it? It's like online poker versus um, real life poker. It's you know, yeah, it's exactly. the same it's game but played completely differently in a sense. Exactly. Um, which I think it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting thing to consider, which I haven't really ever properly like thought about. But because <laughs> the reality is, like, I don't actually play on tabletop simulator myself too much because. I make videos and I, it's a little bit like you, right? If I'm at my computer, I don't want to spend three hours talking to somebody playing the game and it sort of feels like a little bit of a waste sometimes. Like, oh, I should be doing something a little bit more productive, I guess. Um, right. Yeah, so that's, a, that's some interesting stuff there. Um, if you were going to give anybody some like basic tips to get a little bit better at competitive, you know, you're obviously a great player, as I've mentioned a, a few times. <laughs> um, it's a, what, like, if you had to give somebody, like, oh, I won't say top five, but just, you know, just a small amount of little tips you could give to somebody who's just maybe just getting into competitive, you know what I mean? Like, um, not stuff like slingshot your models or whatever. You just... No, no, no. So I think, I think the most important thing, uh, the different differentiates, uh, somebody who's learning to uh, the, the first big step you should take on your competitive journey is to learn dice percentages. Um, and it'll figure out what expected outcomes you have from certain dice pools. This is not what uh, I wanted that, to hear because I still haven't done yeah. this. <laughs> so yeah. this is some terrible news for me, but keep going. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, you know, the, the beginning players will often, have their idea, like they'll know where they want to move, they know who they want to shoot, um, and they'll have these kind of uh, macro tactics that uh, sound good. Um, and then the next step is to learn dice percentages and then to figure out if that is the best choice um, and what you're what you're going to be actually be accomplishing by doing this. So, um, for example, uh, a six man unit of stormtroopers with a DLT um, is expected to get four hits. At range three mm-hmm. um so you know that uh through heavy cover you're going to get two of those through um if you're shooting at red dice a red defense dice unit you're only going to do one wound um uh and those are the expected averages and so, so you know using those numbers to to shape um to shape your decisions uh, and not just you know uh what you think sounds right yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm I probably don't do that enough. Uh, generally, I'm more like an intuitive kind of guy. I'm like, well, I need to kill this unit first, or so I'm gonna fire everything at it. But sometimes I'll be like, oh well, actually, I know that that's actually likely not to do anything to them, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, 
But yeah, I think that's probably a very good point. It's definitely something I need to learn. And if anything, I've got a rally point qualifier this Saturday, so I'll uh, <laughs> I'll be trying to think about that. Um, and if I do well, I'll I'll congratulate you. And if I do poorly, I'll blame <laughs> you. So <laughs> so that's that all good. <laughs> it's all good. That's where we are. Um, but no, yeah. honestly, um, is there anything else you want to talk about? I'm, I'm pretty much done with my notes. Not that my notes are very extensive or anything like that, but we spoke about your blog, which people should check out. We spoke about the uh, Legion Ooh, let me get the name of that because it's uh doesn't roll off the tip of my tongue. The Legion Tournament Circuit, um, is or the, you know, the LTC is fine also. The LTC, yes. Uh, if you want, uh, you should also, by the way, anybody watching, if you're listening or whatever you want to call it, get in the Discord. A lot of like everybody from the community is in there basically, um, and the Facebook groups are pretty decent. But is there anything else you particularly want to talk about? Uh, no, I, I'm happy if you're happier. I'm very, 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 very happy. <laughs> Just, just in life in general, and uh, okay. <laughs> uh, but I'm very happy with uh, how it's gone today. You've uh, very much thank you for your insight. It's been um, very interesting insight and interesting. Okay, I was making sure they weren't the same word. And um, yeah, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I if you should go check out um, Nick's blog. By the way, Freeman, great name. Always makes me think of Half Life. Don't know how many times you get told that, but I can't help it. I love it. <laughs> I love Half-Life, not going to lie. Um, yeah. You should check out Nick's, uh, Nick's blog, Impact X, or Legion... Uh, Impact Legion? Wait, is it in, Legion, Legion Impact? Impact Legion. Legion Impact. Legion Impact. And uh, obviously, we just talked about the LTC. So uh, thanks to you, Nick. Um, to anybody listening, you know, so if you're on YouTube, subscribe, like, that kind of stuff. And if you, it's available on iTunes. If you're on iTunes, then I don't know if you can subscribe. I've been told, I think you can. Um, hit subscribe um, yeah so I will bid you farewell uh, I'll let Nick just say bye if you want to um, I mean it'd be weird if you didn't thank you. no thank you guys bye thank you very much to everybody watching uh, have a most beautiful day and goodbye bye <laughs>